and welcome to my face. I asked you guys to ask me questions you think I would never answer. In this video, I will be answering them. If I refuse, I have to suffer the consequences. Hello everyone and welcome to the worst decision I have ever made. This is not going to be a Jurassic World Evolution 2 sandbox park build like any other, because I won't just be playing Jurassic World Evolution 2, I'll also be playing a game I'd like to call Truth or Disaster. A lot of questions were submitted by you guys, but only 15 made it into this video. The top 5 most liked questions, which I will be saving for last, and 10 more questions picked by my lovely and not at all evil assistant, Omar. If you are a member of the Evolution Square Discord, you know I'm in trouble. So, what's going to happen? Well, in each of these 15 hatcheries await two species. One species I love, and one species... I don't. If I answer a question, I get to release my favorite dinosaur or marine reptile or flying reptile, and while I answer, I can decorate the exhibit and guest area to my heart's desire. If I refuse to answer a question, the punishment is threefold. I have to release the dinosaur or marine reptile or flying reptile that I don't like. I'm not allowed to decorate the exhibit at all. All, and I have to change one thing in the sandbox settings from my ideal setting to catastrophe. The more questions I refuse to answer, the more of a nightmare this park becomes. Storms, disease, escapes, regret, self-loathing. Let's just get started. All right, I am ready for the first question. That is a lie. I am not ready, but I'll never be ready, so I'm just gonna do it. There is a notification. Why is there a notification? Here we go. It's two questions, I'm already confused. <laughs> oh, but it's actually two pretty much the same questions, so I'm gonna consider them as... Did he actually give it a TF2 background? Is that what's happening right now? <laughs> anyway, Runic Raptor and Connor Bendingson uh, both ask about my most embarrassing or awkward um, romantic relationship experience. Runic also asks about my most embarrassing social outing story in general. Um, but whenever I have a social outing, it's an embarrassing social outing, so <laughs> I'm very socially awkward. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> uh, so let's just, I would be giving you my entire autobiography if I would be covering that, so I'll stick to most embarrassing romantic experience, I guess. Does that mean I'm gonna answer this qu I think it means I'm gonna answer this question. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I think I have to. The fact that I am willing to answer this question means that I go to the aviary and I get to release the species that I actually want. Now, this is not a diss towards the Dimorphodon. It's just in terms of the species in the aviary. It's my least favorite species of flying reptile in the game. Sierra Dactylus, on the other hand, is my favorite. I think it's really cool. So I'm gonna release that into the park and I'm going to be decorating this exhibit. I'll probably speed it up for you guys. And in the meantime, I'll be telling my awkward date story. Enjoy. While construction is happening, let me tell you this story. It's been 84 years, a very long time ago. But when I was still living with my parents and my boyfriend at the time was also still living with his parents, we wanted to get away to get some alone time, some special alone time. So we booked a little cottage for a midweek. The problem was neither of us had a car and we couldn't get there with public transportation. So his parents ended up driving us there and my dad came to pick us up. Both about an hour and a half drive, but it was en route for his parents and for my dad going somewhere else. So it was fine, it was fine. It was not fine. Look, this might not even sound all that embarrassing, but everyone in that car both times knew exactly what the purpose of that trip was. That in and of itself was excruciating enough. Lots of weird eye contact and awkward situations. But you can always count on my dad to make it even more awkward. So my dad comes to pick us up and I sit in the passenger seat and my boyfriend sits in the back alone. And I basically put on a stand-up comedy show for my dad to distract him from the, the mere existence of my boyfriend and whatever may have happened in the past five days. But my dad, being the little shit that he is, noticed a hickey and instead of ignoring it like a normal human being would, he pretended to be concerned. 
happened? You have a spot on your neck. Is that a bruise? What happened? He loved every second of it and I hated every second of it. And even when we got home, he just told my mom, Honey, keep an eye out on that spot on her neck. It might be a rash. It could get bigger. If it does, she should go see a doctor. It was so awful. Thankfully, it was a long time ago and I'm probably the only one who still remembers it and still wakes up in a cold sweat at night. Nothing has ever topped that and I'm very grateful for that, but also that's because I've carefully engineered my life to avoid situations like that recurring. But that is the most embarrassing date-related story. Alrighty, so I finished decorating the first uh, exhibit, first part of the park. Here's the exhibit itself, looking kind of nice. We used the lantern so we could see the uh, Sierra Dactylus. Pretty nice. Okay, so I think we're ready, quote-unquote, for the next question. Question number two, as selected by my lovely assistant, co-conspirator Omar, who is also Discord moderator. You should join the Discord, by the way, you know, if you don't fear an evil Italian man. Question number two, I am pretty scared. What is the best bread? Also, congrats on reaching 69k. Yeah, this is Omar being Omar. The best bread is French bread, like a French baguette and um yeah that's probably my friendship with omar down the drain <laughs> but that means i can uh i could just go on building what i like so who's next on the list let me check the list next up okay we are going all the way over here instead of releasing the niger source i'm going to release the amargosaurus now just as a disclaimer i don't actually dislike the niger source but they made sense to sort of pit against each other. That's not going to be the case for all of the pairings, but for these, I decided this makes sense. And I definitely love the Amargosaurus, and I like the Nigerosaurus just less. So that's what I'm going to be releasing. It's just so cute. All right, so they go into this like really big enclosure. So I, what I should do is I should just uh, divide enclosure design in three sections. So I think it's, um, let's start with the essentials. So the tour and uh, something like water and terrain. So whether I can add trees and rocks is still up for a debate. Right now, all I can do is uh, water, terrain paints, and the tour itself. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a river, because I like doing that. Swirly, 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 we go over there. And I'll add a little bit of terrain. Nope, the paint, just the paint. Uh, there. Zig zagging on through. All right, so in terms of design, that's obviously not a lot, but you know, that's what the gods have decided is all I can do. For the next round, uh, you know, from these hatcheries, what I'll do is do rocks and trees. And then if I answer the third one from over here, I also get to do the guest section. Okay, question number three. <laughs> <laughs> Professor DNG asks, how would you react to being gallantly courted by Jeff Goldblum's flirty self? Um, I can answer this question. <laughs> so I guess that's a relief. Uh, I would react the same way I react to everything um, with awkwardness, like a very generous, generous dose of awkwardness. Would I actually um respond favorably if the jeff goldblum is jeff goldblum married i guess this is a hypothetical <laughs> anyway so it doesn't really matter uh but let's say in this alternate universe where i am worthy of being gallantly courted by jeff goldblum he is also single um would i actually respond favorably to it as in um engage in further um and this takes me back to the first question engage in awkward romantic interaction uh no i would not <laughs> uh jeff is a little too old for me i love him as i i say this always i say this all the time 
I love Jeff as the weird uncle that you see once a year at the Christmas party and he has all of these crazy stories and you just you just love listening to him but he's this i don't i don't know just you don't think of him in a sexual way all right here we go so this is uh the exhibit i kept it quite open i thought for a second you know what i'm gonna be smart over here i'm gonna do uh like the tall nut just in case if i don't answer enough of the uh, questions i have to turn on dinosaur comfort and requirements and stuff <laughs> i'm just gonna risk it <laughs> All right, the fourth question, as selected by Omar, is... Uh, Whipper Egg, uh, what is that background image? Did you ever commit a crime or something slightly bad? And if so, what was it? Ooh, this is a very lovely skin. Not a crime, sorry to disappoint. Following rules is actually just part of my personality, but I did do something naughty and it's a pretty funny story to tell. When I was 16, I started cutting gym class. Every single one of them. Um, I've been bullied a lot in primary school and high school and gym was just one of those things I didn't feel like having to put my legs behind my neck while hanging upside down from the rings as everyone was staring at me. Of course, eventually the school noticed. So one afternoon I was home upstairs and my mom was downstairs and the phone rings. Now, being the weird kid that I was, I answered with, hello, this is the redacted last name residence. Who am I speaking with? Yeah. On the other end of the line, a man says, Hello, this is the principal of so-and-so high school. I'd like to talk to you about your daughter. And instead of saying, I am the daughter, let me get my mom for you. I said, of course, yes, let's talk. I'm more than happy to talk. Let's talk about that. Talk, please talk. The principal goes on to say that they've noticed that I've been cutting classes and I'm just on the phone going along with it. Like, oh no, that gosh darn little rascal. <laughs> To my horror, the principal invites me and my mom to come to his office sometime that week so we can all talk about what's going on. And I go as far as making an appointment. Of course, once he hangs up, panic sets in because I can't show up for that meeting without my mom. So I had to confess to my mom that not only have I been cutting class, but I've also impersonated her over the phone and oh, by the way, when we meet the principal, can you please just pretend that you talked to him over the phone? My mom was super mad, of course she was, but I was actually way more afraid of what my dad was going to say because he was the much more strict parent and much less sensitive to the whole bullying situation. When my dad comes home, I'm sitting on the couch watching TV and he slowly walks around to stand in front of me with this stern expression and my heart is pounding but all of a sudden his face splits into a grin and he says i know what you did like in that in that voice he wasn't mad at all he thought the entire situation was hilarious he was actually happy that i'd done something naughty for once and he was the one who came with me to the principal's office and when we met, the principal said something like, Good to meet you, sir. I talked to your wife on the phone last Tuesday. And my dad was way too happy to play along. He was all like, Yes, yes, you most certainly did talk to my wife. Uh-huh. And the story ends with me never having to go to another gym class. And now we move on to question number five. Uh, Unai Simon, if a Tyrannosaurus is running... I hate this question and I also hate Omar right now. <laughs> we talked about this yesterday and I I asked him point blank, were there any math questions? Did you pick any math questions? And he was like, no. No, of course not. I wouldn't do that. If a Tyrannosaurus is running at a speed of 38 kilometers per hour, how much time would it cost him to catch a goat that is 170 meters away, running at a speed of 0.5 
meters per second. I have no idea. Question number five is what's going to do me in. So let me check the list. Uh, let's see. Question... No! <laughs> oh, this hurts me to my core. Yeah, so question number five. It, um, it's costing me dearly. Let me return to the game. Uh, <laughs> Instead of the Cryolophosaurus, which is a new dinosaur in Jurassic World Evolution 2 and one I'm really enjoying, instead of that, I have to use the Majungasaurus. So here we go. And on top of that, I'm not allowed to decorate the exhibit. I'm not allowed to do anything with the guest area. And on top of that, and this is the worst, the absolute worst. I, um, I have to go into sandbox settings. And the first setting that I'm changing and the worst setting is storms. I have to set it to the worst possible setting. Literal catastrophe, free, catastrophe sorry, frequent storms. Now obviously dinosaur comfort and escapes are still off. As you might have guessed, those are the next uh, sandbox settings that I would have to change if I refuse to answer. But still, it's a tempered map, so I think tornadoes could be a thing. Fences could get destroyed, all of that stuff. So I swear I didn't skip on math classes. I swear I didn't. Okay, question number six. Sarcastically inspired, hey, I'm glad one of your questions got picked. Uh, if you were to have lunch with five famous people still alive or dearly departed, but you all had to be naked, <laughs> who would you choose to be those five? Do I have to be naked as well? Oh. All right, so this question will be getting answered. And on the list is Iguanodon versus Myasaura. Question will be getting answered, so we're gonna do Iguanodon. Alright, now I do obviously have to make haste because this nice quiet weather will not last. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do two viewing galleries attached and uh, actually I'll do this in speed while I answer the question itself you know what I I think I'm not even gonna let the naked affect me because naked is gonna be awkward no matter who you choose like you could say oh just pick uh, just pick exclusively pretty people and uh, then it'll it'll be better you know, don't pick an ugly old guy, but naked is naked. Naked is awful. So <laughs> I'm just going to pick whoever I would want to meet. Um, so that just boils it down to who would I invite? Well, I think first and foremost, Omar is getting invited as punishment for question number five. Now you might say Omar is not famous. Yes, he is. Uh, if you join the Discord, you know he's very, very, very famous. <laughs> And especially in his honor, the lunch we will be serving is unsalted pasta Alfredo. Okay, so as I build, I have four more seats at this awful, awful lunch table that I still have to fill. Now, aside from also just not taking into account the naked part, um, I'm also, you know, I'm just, it's lunch. It's lunch. I'm looking to eat and have a fun time. So, you know, no philosophers, no politicians, no serious stuff. Uh, I just want to have a fun lunch. So the first person that comes to mind is because I'm watching The Crown and Olivia Colman plays the queen there. And Olivia Colman is the queen. She is the cutest older woman ever. Not not the, not the queen, Olivia Colman. Um already know where this is going. Jeff Goldblum is getting an invite. Sorry, Jeff. <laughs> but yeah, I feel like uh, he would fill all of the awkward silences with his crazy stories, so I think he'd be a good person to invite. The fourth person I would be inviting is the dearly departed Carrie Fisher. She was 
crazy, but in a good way, she was such a hoot. I think she'll hit it off with Jeff, too. I, I love whenever she popped up in an interview or something, I loved seeing Carrie Fisher. So she's definitely coming to lunch. We're all going to be laughing our naked asses off. And the final guest is going to be Robin Williams. Also, sadly, dearly departed. Uh, but I miss him. Alright, so that is this guest section and exhibit. I was gonna call it a beautiful exhibit. It's, well, I guess it's okay. It's not spectacular, but it's kind of nice. It's decorated, at least. Uh, so that's that part done. Alright, here we go. Question number seven. Cutie Buppy asks, if they released dino-inspired clothing that made you look and feel like a dinosaur, would you wear it and what dinosaur would you want? Would I wear it? No, I probably wouldn't. You know, I could, I, I guess I could wear it like on the weekends or something. And my favorite dinosaur is Stegosaurus. So I would want something that would make me look like a Stegosaurus. You know, sexy with a hump back and uh, plates and a thagomizer to uh, to whip people with. I guess I could make that work. <laughs> That's something I would want. <laughs> and since I answered that question, I get to use a dinosaur that I want, and it's in here. Uh, Pachycephalosaurus, not, not the biggest fan of, I'm sorry. Homelocephaly, however, a little cutie. Yes, please, gib. Gib. <laughs> They're adorable. Uh oh, the color of the sky is changing. That's making me scared. That's making me nervous. Don't. Please don't. Please don't. Let me cheat destiny. Let's open the park. All right, all right, all right. <gasps> no, here comes the first storm. No, 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 no. Math, I hate you! <laughs> All right, let me get prepared. Because I am woefully unprepared. Building has been damaged. Oh, oh, that's lucky. There goes the Jeep. All right, phew! We're doing fine, we're doing good, it's fine, it's fine. Ready for question number eight. And I'm keeping my fingers crossed that it's a good one. Uh, considering the shape, oh no, what's this gonna be? Considering the shape of a T-Rex's esophagus? I think that's a throat thing. Uh, would you think that in a hypothetical case in which dinosaurs were alive could talk and casually learn Italian, that it would be able to pronounce the word lasagna? As a reward for answering this question, I get to release the Herrerasaurus instead of the Sintausaurus. They're a weird mix, but you know, uh, I don't hate that many dinosaurs in the game. I actually hate very few dinosaurs in this game, so I had to go with something I really like versus something that just doesn't excite me. And the Sintausaurus just doesn't excite me, so we're gonna release the Herrerasaurus. We can look at it two ways. Uh, if they were still alive today, that means they went through hundreds of millions of years of evolution. So if in that time frame they evolved to be an entirely different thing from what we know them to be, to have been in the past, then sure, anything is possible. But I am going to answer the question with, you know, assuming that they're still dinosaurs the way we know them, the way we envision them. And I will say, no, they won't be able to pronounce lasagna. The shape of the esophagus has nothing to do, or very little to do, with that sort of complex communication. What is really needed are dexterous lips and a very dexterous tongue to be able to manage all of those different sound variations, those minute sound variations that it takes to, you know, communicate at a human level. So my answer is no. Alrighty, so that is this section done. Uh, it's raining, uh, but let me hop on over and see what the next question is going to be. Question number nine. Uh, Andreas Fru. Congrats, Evo. Here's my question. What's the shadiest thing you've ever done out of envy slash jealousy? 
I don't think I can answer this question. Uh, not because I'm trying to hide an action, but because I can't really think of anything. I can't answer this question, so I guess by default I have to forfeit, which sucks. <laughs> I'm gonna have to miss out on as a result of that is my favorite dinosaur in real life, the Stegosaurus. Uh, I'm gonna have to replace that with Sauropelta, just one Sauropelta. Question number 10. This is the final question selected by Omar. After that, we're gonna get into the top five uh, most liked questions. So let's see, question number 10. I should not have chosen Omar to pick these questions. This was a mistake. <laughs> Uh, no, I don't like gnomes. Okay, and yay for me because for this- Oh no, there's a storm coming. No, no, no. Oh no, I just realized. I just realized I have to go into settings and I have to turn comfort on. Do I have carnivores? I have Majungasaurus and Herrerasaurus. Oh, pray for me, folks. Pray for me. Yeah, because this is part of the- uh, uh, the envy question that I couldn't answer. All right, in the meantime, I am going to release the Mosasaurus. <sighs> 10 seconds later. Oh my God, it's all going to hell in a hand baskets. Okay, what do I need to fix? <laughs> Stop it. Oh, 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 okay. It looks like the storm is already dissipating. In terms of the exhibit, there's, there's nothing to do here. So I'll decorate this, and while I decorate to make this, like, worth your time, I'll tell you about the gnomes. Uh, he is obsessed with gnomes, and, um, yeah, he just loves them. Yeah, he's he's a great big fan of gnomes. Um, I, I would go so far as to call it a gnome fetish. Yeah, so if you join the Discord, uh, make sure to, uh, to send him a, um... To send him a gnome. He loves that. Loves it. Loves it more than bread. Probably reached the most anticipated part of the video, which is the top five most liked questions, which I'm assuming are also going to be the most um, awful questions for me. The community needs to know, what do you think... This was a very bad idea. What's a bad idea? This. The community needs to know, what do you think dino smashing looked like? Like salmon in rivers? Like today's reptiles slash birds? Or your own free form hypothesis? It has 86 likes. What the hell, people? What the, what is wrong with you? You know what, to stay very, very, very far out of what could be considered any sort of bestiality fantasy because, I don't know, I'm kind of worried that it's leaning in that direction. I'm gonna refuse to answer this question. Even if it's probably not King V Panda's fetish, but I feel like out of, you know, the 77,000 of you, I feel like it might be one of y'all's fetish to hear me talk about dinosaur smashing. So I won't. Okay, ooh, things are gonna get interesting now, folks. Okay, so let me find uh, the Allosaurus and not release it. Instead, we're gonna release the Nodosaurus. Nothing against Nodosaurus, but it's not as exciting as Allosaurus. That's, that's literally all I'm saying here. It is pretty cute. And what we're also gonna do is we're gonna go into settings and we're gonna turn escapes to high. Oh my god, the Majungasaurus. This is gonna be trouble. <laughs> the second of the top five most asked questions is... Uh, erased gaming. <laughs> See, there's Omar's gnome fetish just popping up again. If you were the director of Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, what will the movie be like? Well, what would the movie be like? Unfortunately, unfortunately, it does exist the way it exists. This is a very difficult question. I'm struggling. All right, first things first, because I will be answering this question. I just don't know quite yet how, but I will be answering this. If I have to do it in post-production, Post-production. <laughs> I'm already considering myself to be a filmmaker here. Oh, I will add it in post-production. <laughs> okay, 
Hey! Hi! It's actually a day later, but you're getting your answer. Any Fallen Kingdom rewrite still needs to take the dinosaurs from point A, the islands, to point B, the mainland. That still needs to happen. Now, in my opinion, the very core premise of Fallen Kingdom is actually fine. Having to save the dinosaurs from Nublar only to have them be sold off. I would, I would keep that but rewrite how it plays out. In my version, Claire and Owen would be the head of DPG together, and Biosyn reaches out to them to fund the Save the Dinosaurs operation. They then spent a good chunk of the movie on Nublar tracking down dinosaurs with Rexy getting her big action scene, and they accidentally and unknowingly release the Mosasaurus before Owen and Claire realize what's up with the dinosaurs being sold off. The ship full of dinosaurs leaves Nublar as the volcano erupts, but Owen and Claire know that they they can't let the ship reach the mainland and have the dinosaurs end up in the wrong hands. So they decide to sabotage the ship to stall it, hopefully giving them time to contact the authorities and have them intervene. However, the sabotaging leads to a pack of Herreras or something else escaping, which results in a horror-like sequence in the bowels of the ship. Meanwhile, the Mosasaurus comes around and picks off anyone trying to escape via lifeboats, and it rams the ship, compromising the hull. Cargo hold starts to fill up with water, and some other Zia-like protagonist can't stand the thought of the dinosaurs drowning, so she starts setting them free. So they at least have a chance of swimming to shore. This unfortunately leads to her death. Another Franklin-esque character, but far less screamy, manages to call for help and he, Owen and Claire get rescued by a Biosyn helicopter pilot that they met earlier in the movie, who made a joke about being just a temp. They look down at the ship adrift at sea, still quite a distance from the shore, and clearly they are mourning Blue, who is on board and had her own action scene. And one of them wonders with mixed feelings, maybe the dinosaurs can swim to shore? To which the helicopter pilot replies, it doesn't matter if they make it or not, there's three other ships. Without Claire and Owen knowing, Biosyn had been loading up more ships full of dinosaurs at other harbors on Isla Nublar. The ending sequence includes the ships docking on the mainland and the dinosaurs being loaded onto trucks, including Rexy, who was not on the main ship from the movie. It shows Dr. Wu doing his evil scientist stuff in a huge, fully staffed lab. And finally, it ends with a shot of the shipwreck, with the ship having drifted very close to shore and Blue running across the beach past the camera. I had a really detailed version of this plot, but as I've done with some other questions as well, I re-recorded my answer for brevity because I have the answer to ramble on and get into too many details like, like I'm actually doing right now. Uh, but in a nutshell, that is how I would rewrite Fallen Kingdom. No hybrids, no Lockwood, no human clones. So the dinosaur that I get to add to my park is over here. It's the Changzusaurus release. Oh, interesting. Interesting camera angle. Very directorial. <laughs> oh no, here we go. Here we go. Dinosaur threats. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, you're dead. Oh, yep, 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 yep. <laughs> oh, that is harsh. That is so harsh. Let's watch another one. Oh, do a little side shuffle. Who's the victim? Who's the victim? You fool! Uh, I'm missing some dinosaurs. What's this? What are you? It's a Herrerasaurus! Wait, what happened? How'd you get out? Did you climb out? <gasps> they climb! Oh, well, that's, that's a problem, isn't it? I don't know when we stopped recording, but at some point we stopped recording. That's great. That's fantastic. Uh, so lots of things have escaped. Uh, we had another storm, so lots of things are now broken on top of that. Uh, you know what, I guess that's not even a priority right there. That's a priority. Okay, so even like the exhibits I'm happy with, I'm gonna have to ruin. And this is why I don't like the, uh, the lack of feeders. Uh, because you have to ruin your exhibits. Okay, so I think, I think we're good. Oh, oh my god, oh my god, there's still something over here. What is you? It's a Majungasaurus. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Third question of the most liked questions. This is a very long <laughs> bit of text. No one. 
What are some of your hobbies or interests outside of Jurassic Park and dinosaurs? Obviously, dinosaurs are literally the best things ever, but what kind of TV shows do you watch? Do you play any other games? Do you like to Honestly, after work and YouTube, there isn't that much time left for other hobbies. Um, I guess the good thing is my main hobby is YouTube. It's making and editing videos. Um, I did used to write and draw a lot, but I don't really have time for that anymore. I mean, yeah, I could make time. I could make even fewer YouTube videos and then I'd have time, obviously. But right now I'm really invested in this channel and I want to make it work. I want to get to 100k. Hopefully we can get to 80k by the end of this year. So subscribe if you haven't already. So YouTube is my biggest hobby slash interest, but that obviously does involve dinosaurs. So a hobby that just doesn't necessarily involve dinosaurs would be watching movies. I'm a bit of a movie buff and I'm also really interested in the behind the scenes and making ofs of movies. We will be moving over to the second to last question and uh, let's see what it is. No, oh, this is this is where it gets dirty. 177 likes. You guys like starting drama, don't you? If you had to rank all the major Jurassic World Evolution YouTubers, i.e. Best in Slot, Gaming Beaver, Swerve, and yourself, you know what? I'm honored to be apparently considered one of the major Jurassic World Evolution YouTubers. Best in Slot, Gaming Beaver, Swerve, and yourself, just based on overall content, what would it be? Where would you go on the list and where would they go? Who's the best and who's the worst? Um, this is a really easy question to answer. And the order would be Gaming Beaver, Best in Slot, Swerve, and then me. All right, and that takes us to this exhibit over here. T-Rex versus Archaeonothomimus. I actually kind of like Archaeonothomimus, but it's not as exciting as a T-Rex. So we're going to release the T-Rex. While it's not universally true that the more subscribers you have, the better you are. Sometimes small creators are way better than big creators, oftentimes because they have to be. They don't have the support of the algorithm. Uh, but in this case, I think the subscriber count is uh, an accurate quantifiable measurement on which to rank us from best to worst. I'm a huge fan of the Gaming Beaver, so of course he will be number one. Uh, I'm even more so of a fan after having done a video with him because he is genuinely super nice. Out of the four of us, he does the most editing by far, so he is well-deserved a mile better ahead of the rest of us. In second place would come Best in Slot. I think Best in Slot is very good at giving the people the Jurassic World Evolution content that they want. I mean, he shows everything and there's obviously a high level of dedication and commitment involved in that. In third place would come Swerve. I mean, the proof is in the pudding. His channel absolutely blew up when he started covering Camp Cretaceous. He's been very good at harnessing that show for his YouTube channel. He knows what people want to see and what they want to hear about and what they want to talk about. So a well-deserved third place. And in last place is me. And that's not even a bad thing, like I said, to be considered one of the four major Jurassic World Evolution YouTubers is amazing. I will say in defense of my fragile ego that of the four of us, I'm the only one not doing YouTube full time. So it's different. You can't say that it's not. It's different. I have less time to put into making videos, uh, less time to evolve, as you might say. Fourth place is not a bad place to be. You were probably expecting some drama in this answer, but I don't know. I think this is a fair way of ranking us. I guess I do want to add that even though we are in the same niche, we do still do our own thing. So if you look deeper than surface level, uh, then it's comparing apples to oranges. You know, Swerve does mostly... Camp Cretaceous content, like I said, and I do mostly creative park building. So how would you really compare those two? But when you just look at um, public interest, I feel like that's a good measurement to go by. And um, yeah, that's that informs my ranking. We've reached the final question. Dr. Wu has a gun to your head and is forcing you to genetically mod modify Bo. This has 94 likes. Uh, if you had to genetically modify Bo with a dinosaur, which dinosaur do you choose? You still have to keep Bosaurus as a pet 
as a pet afterwards too. Because that question is getting an answer, I can release the Spinosaurus instead of Hwayangosaurus. Hwayangosaurus again is a fine dinosaur. Is it worthy of being a deluxe dinosaur? But it's still fine, regardless. Uh, is it a Spinosaurus, though? No. No, it's not. Well, Bo is the cutest bunny ever. He's so adorable. Uh, so I guess I would genetically modify him with the cutest dinosaur that I know of, and that would be the homolocephaly. Uh, so just imagine, like, a homolocephaly that hops around like a bunny <laughs> and has bunny ears. No, we have a storm! That's so mean, I'm so close to the end of this. I hope my pain and suffering was entertaining to you. I actually had quite a bit of masochistic fun making this video. Ask another question in a comment. I'm going to pin and answer one of them. And I want to thank everyone who subscribed to the channel and helped me get to this point. This one was for you guys. If you're not part of the square yet, then subscribe to the channel. I'm hoping we can get to 80,000 subscribers by the end of the year. If we can, I'm going to give one random person a very nice Christmas gift. Remember, I'm not Mr. Beast or anything, but it's gonna be nice. More on that some other time. Stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching, liking, subscribing, and until next time, enjoy the game. <laughs>